Welcome to Moth the Week. I'm Darrell Bream. The news this week. East Anglia has been rocked by a bird flu outbreak. Some of the poultry workers are so concerned about it that they've stopped having sex with the turkeys. <laughs> The bird flu scare has come as a major blow to the turkey population, just as they were congratulating each other on making it through Christmas. <laughs> In a disaster on this scale, it's all too easy to overlook the forgotten victims, the cranberry sauce manufacturers. <laughs> there are plans to make the school curriculum more appealing to teenagers by introducing lessons with greater relevance. So, computer games will be followed by happy slapping and double drugs. <laughs> It's been estimated that the 2012 Olympics will cost Britain four times as much as originally stated, rising to a massive nine billion pounds. That's a good start. One world record in the bag already. <laughs> Letter bombs have been discovered at the offices of a speed camera company, a congestion charge company and the Vehicle Licensing Association. The police believe the bombs are the work of a disgruntled motorist and have narrowed down their list to suspects to everybody. <laughs> A woman astronaut besotted with her colleague was accused of trying to murder a love rival. When she was arrested, the astronaut had two bin bags, some rubber tubing and a roll of gaffer tape. NASA are still trying to work out how she stole a complete shuttle repair kit. <laughs> the male astronaut involved had only considered it a casual fling, a case of Roger and out. <laughs> Joining me tonight are six of the country's top comedy performers. Annie Parsons, Joe Caulfield, Russell Howard, and Frankie Ball, Hugh Dennis, and Rod Gilbert. Welcome to the show. OK. Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of clean-up operations after the bird flu outbreak at Bernard Matthews Farm in Suffolk. But what does B-T-A-D stand for? Is it, bugger, there's a dead one. <laughs> Is it Bioterrorists Annual Desco? <laughs> Is, Is it, it BBC Terminate Anton Deck? <laughs> <laughs> Is it best to avoid drumsticks? <laughs> the, T, the T, I'll give you a yeah. clue, stands for turkey. British turkeys are doomed! <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, turkeys are destroyed, I would yes. reckon. But what would be? Bilious, billions, British. B British. Very ah, good. British well turkeys. done. Hugh, by a process of going through every <coughs> word, <coughs> beginning with B, <laughs> Hugh has correctly I identified the answer. <laughs> Let us applaud him. <laughs> the answer I was looking for was British turkeys are destroyed and refers to the arrival of the deadly H5N1 strain of avian flu in this country. Exclusion zones have been set up and a cull of 159,000 birds carried out. <laughs> Is it enough? I wonder, ladies and gentlemen. The BBC sent us a note not to scaremonger in any way. It's out there! It's out there, for God's sake! Oh, Why <laughs> can guns and shotgun cartridges? What the hell are you doing watching this, for Christ's sake? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're going to be doing right now. We should do Sorry, it. that's something wrong, John. We don't need to panic, do we? Let's we don't need it. to panic. Apparently, if you eat turkey, you should be absolutely fine. The only way you can catch it is if you dry out the carcass and sniff it. That's essentially it, yes. If yeah. you're into yeah. that sort of weird <laughs> shit, you yeah. deserve exactly what's coming to you. That's the not true. I call Suffolk. Yeah. That might well kick off. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about the one place in the world where bird flu could actually raise life expectancy levels <laughs> as the locals finally stop marrying I... seagulls. But the... <laughs> yeah, the, the interesting thing about it is that they are battery turkeys. They're battery turkeys, they're treated very, very cruelly, but uh, of the infected ones, the Duracell ones lived slightly longer. <laughs> Oh, and they've banned you... pigeon racing on the back of this as well. They've banned also, they've panicked yeah. and banned pigeon. And that's going to force it underground, surely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's tremendously cruel the conditions they keep these turkeys in, though, isn't it? It would actually be more humane if they let them live in a bargain bucket. <laughs> if they rolled into a bargain bucket as an egg, hatched, lived their life there, and then just before they died, onion rings were added. <laughs> OK, I will say that we are obliged not to scaremonger here. Unlike the papers, which went bananas, uh, the mirror said, we may die, save us. <laughs> and the news world ran with, human bird flu is here. <laughs> Just for clarification, human bird flu isn't here. Nice. And people in the news world going bananas. There's no such no, thing. The disease doesn't for exist For years anymore. now, we've been told you've got to have, you know, free-range 
chicken. It's going to completely change that. You don't want a chicken that's free range. You want a chicken that has been locked up <laughs> for a long... You know, this isn't an ordinary chicken. This is a chicken which has been raised friendless in solitary confinement. <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the actual first one of H5N1 in this country was actually a swan, wasn't it? It was a swan, and yes. And it arrived in Scotland and they said, oh, well, you know, it's probably come over from France. <laughs> Nothing to do with us. That's it. Blame those foreigners. <laughs> yeah. Mad cow disease. Oh, yeah. Sod all to do with us. Probably some German cow came across on a lilo across the North Sea. <laughs> Birds have got an easy deal. Birds have got an easy deal, haven't they? They're just, they're just getting flu. I mean, cats can get AIDS. That would have made Top Cat a very different show. <laughs> My food's falling out, DC. Officer Dibble, I've got AIDS. <laughs> no, yes, what? Hang on a minute. What? Whoa. Ca I... Can cats get AIDS? It's called fades. No, it's called uh, fades. Feline, uh, feline, AIDS, yeah. feline AIDS. Who's yeah. how they get AIDS? <laughs> Well, like feeder or fade thank, or... thank God you don't work for the National Health Phone. I don't know, something. <laughs> See you later, mate. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing Pro Evo on the PlayStation. See you. Yeah. <laughs> Quick question, sorry. Bernard Matthews and his farm has been in the yeah. news before. Uh, do you remember the stories that it was in the news for? Twizzlers. It was Twizzlers as one thing, yes. They, uh, Jamie they... Oliver slagged off Twizzlers. And, and they invent turkey Twizzlers. What else? Oh, else? they uh, played uh, t uh, baseball with turkey. Oh, yeah, they turkey baseball. baseball with turkey. Yeah. <laughs> but I was bad. Which is bad for a, a turkey's self-image. It's not a sport that suits them. Exactly. Yeah. They can't, they can't they, hold the bat. It, they can't field. If they'd mix the teams up even, like half human, half turkey, it, it then you get a bit Do you think they got confused between the words base and based? I, 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 to be honest, with the turkeys, I think they got confused between the word baseball and piñata. Is how they got confused. <laughs> What's piñata? Piñata is when you took the shit out of a donkey on, on a road. It's a Mexican thing. It's an Irish thing. thing. It's not an Irish <laughs> thing, no. <laughs> it couldn't be less of an Irish thing, piñata. Yeah. What, what? Well, hello. Welcome to Ireland. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure to have yeah. you here at the Shaughnessy just... Farm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dad, are you... That's cheeky. Yeah. You're just doing it in a Mexican accent. I'm... I could, I could just as easily say there's nothing more Irish than piñata. Welcome now, here we are, just about to beat the shit of a that's, See, that's, a, that's an that's, Irish game now. That offends me. It is a okay, yeah. <laughs> That kind of that's cheap, Mexican. excuse me, national stereotyping you're doing there just is wrong. No. And so do my cousins. Uh, sorry. <laughs> if this happens, and it's brought into the healthcare system in general, do you think Britain's healthcare system will be able to cope with, you know, a mass outbreak no. of... Yeah. It almost certainly not. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> we struggle with everything, haven't we? Everything we've ever had. You may have heard now that they've got this new worry about mad sheep disease. As a follow-on from mad cow disease, the government have been doing research on sheep's brains for five years. Turned out recently that, in fact, they've been doing the research on cows' brains by mistake, and the research was worth jack shit. You'd have thought, you'd have thought they might have spied this, you know. Oh, have you got the sheep's brain? Yes. <laughs> Mind you, it was a big sheep, <laughs> black and white, went moo a lot. <laughs> That's how mad it is. Lucky we got <laughs> that search. Who is that? Who's going to step in and, and save the health service then? Richard Branson. Yes, that's it. Yeah. With uh, Virgin Surgeries. He's moving into health on the basis that if you run a coach and a train company, you're going to understand waiting lists. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How can you trust anything that Richard Branson does? Mm. What sort of arsehole tries to fly around the world in a balloon when he owns a bloody airline? <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's going to be exactly like Virgin Trains. They'll go, oh, you can't see the doctor, but we do have a replacement coach driver if you'd like to speak to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got, yeah. he's got, got a thing now where people can pay a million dollars to travel into space with him. I'd pay three grand just not to be stuck in a lift with the arse. <laughs> <laughs> he's also got I, I, don't his... think not, I don't think it's with him, it's with his company. No, he's think... going up as well. Yeah. I, on every flight, he's yeah. going to sit. Yeah. Well, Stephen Hawking <laughs> has agreed to be on it. Or maybe Branson just turned his volume down. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go, don't you? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Branson, like Branson treated Stephen Hawking like a ventriloquist dog, did he? <laughs> I want to go on the plane! I want to go on the plane! <laughs> Don't put me back in the box! Don't put me back in the box! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it, what they can do with medicine these days? It's like that woman last week who gave birth to a... She was 67 years old. And you're thinking, you don't really want to be a kid there struggling to walk, finding out that your parents are in exactly the same yeah. condition. <laughs> it's not going to be a struggle pushing it out at 67, though, isn't it? That baby's... <laughs> 
baby's going to have spent the last three months bungee jumping. <laughs> the end of that round, ladies and gentlemen. The winners are Frankie, you and Roz. <laughs> now we play a round called Wheel of News 2, Wheel Harder. This game <laughs> involves Rod, Andy, Frankie and Joe. So you can make your way to the performance area, please. This is a stand-up challenge. Our random news generator contains a bank of topics. We spin the wheel, <coughs> the topic will come up, and they'll have to step forward and make jokes about it. And the winning team will be the one with the best material. OK, the first topic, let's spin the wheel. First topic is climate change. Who wants to step forward on that? I'll sort out climate it's change. Rod. <laughs> I'll sort out climate change, Dara. People, I... Is that climate change? <laughs> that, was, that was Lake District about a week ago. Uh, <laughs> People are going on about climate change as if it's the end of the world. Listen, I, I'm Welsh. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> I couldn't give a... That's what I want. That's what I want. Our climate is shit house. I can't wait for it to change. Like, people are, You've got no idea how tough it is living here. I was eight before I realised I could take a cagoule off. How about that? In the Bible, God made it rain for 40 days and 40 nights. That's still the best summer I remember. <laughs> bring it on, I said, bring it on. Well, good luck. Let's spin the wheel again. The subject is alternative therapies. Who wants to come in on that? I will. Joe. There's been a survey published about alternative therapies, basically put together by uh, a lot of mad people pretending to be doctors. And uh, they've come up with things that were healthy choices for us, like next week on Valentine's Day, instead of chocolates, they've suggested that you should buy a gift voucher for a colonic irrigation treatment. Because <laughs> hmm. nothing says, I love you, like a hose up your backside. There's <laughs> Joe Coffee. Which leaves us with Andy and Frankie. The next topic is... It's terrorism. <laughs> Andy's in like a shot. Now, Tony Blair has once again tried to justify improving our nuclear weapons because he says one of the reasons is he's worried terrorists such as Osama bin Laden might get hold of them. Now, once again, I think this is scaremongering. We know Osama bin Laden hasn't got a nuclear weapon because we haven't seen it on his videos. <laughs> we know he's got a rifle <laughs> and a donkey. <laughs> I don't think we've got to worry until he's ditched the rifle and we see his donkey strapped with a cruise missile. <laughs> well done, Andy Parson. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what Frankie's been left with. That's crime. <laughs> crime looking a lot like bird flu there, but... <laughs> yeah, they're going to bring in super as boys. Now, I mean, as boys already sounds too cool. Teenagers see it as a badge of honour. They should call them gay boys or bender badges. <laughs> I tell you, the, the TV show I'd love to see, CSI Glasgow. Well, they've done some preliminary tests, and it looks like the intruder definitely did a jobby on the carpets. <laughs> we got this thing on the uh, DVDs now where they say DVD piracy funds the drugs trade. Funds the drugs trade. I don't know about you, but I reckon if you can't make money out of heroin, <laughs> you're going to struggle in general. <laughs> The problem with this crack cocaine is people can just take it or leave it. Thank God we're still selling the Harry Potters. <laughs> Frankie Royal. Your points in that round go to Frankie and Raj. <laughs> we now play a round called Royal Commentary. We'll play in a recent piece of footage featuring the royal family and ask you to provide a commentary. This week, the Queen entertains a foreign visitor. Well, there she is, uh, Royal Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, wearing white gloves as normal. People ask us why. Well, it's quite obvious, because later this evening, she's refereeing the Embassy Snooker. <laughs> uh, well, why are they here? Well, they're here for this, the world's largest musical chairs competition. 
353 chairs, 354 contestants. The table, of course, from IKEA, normally seats 12. It's in the catalog <laughs> as the Bloomquist. Oh, Jack Sherak is absolutely up for this competition. He loves it. And so is the Queen, but she's putting her glasses on. She's not letting the cheating French bastard get away with anything. <laughs> The music provided by the Grenadier Guards with their version of Smack My Bitch Up. <laughs> and apology. Well, the Queen now rising for the reading of the rules. The French will go clockwise, she says. The British will go anti-clockwise. It's very confusing, much as it was at Verdun. Uh, no ducking, no diving, no petting, uh, uh, no bombing, and no Prince Philip, you notice. He uses these occasions when he knows exactly where the Queen is to go off and sleep with someone younger and more attractive, or possibly shoot something, like a duck or an asylum seeker. In this instance, a cameraman. Look, he's fallen backwards. But don't worry. The paramedics will soon be here. Jacques Chirac now leads, reads out the telegrams of apology from those unable to attend. Saddam Hussein would have loved to be here. <laughs> Unfortunately, he fell through. And President Ahmadinejad, Desmond Tutu, and H from Steps uh, can no longer be with us. This is quite boring. Uh, so much so that the man immediately below Jacques Chirac is having to burn his own face <laughs> in order to stay awake. Well, they're funny. Oh, my eyes, he's saying. They find it. Well done, Hugh. <laughs> this round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Joe, which one would you like? Home news, please. OK, your category is home news. The answer is ten minutes. What is the question? Uh, ten minutes. Is that sobering up time for a budget airline pilot? <laughs> <laughs> is it... Is it... How much of 2006 can Pete Doherty remember? Yeah. <laughs> Is it, is How long it, does it take to recreate Jade Goody's brain using only cotton reels and cereal packets? <laughs> <laughs> A working model. Yeah. Is, is it, what is the life expectancy of an Iraqi greengrocer? <laughs> What's it? the maximum length of time a man can tread water once he's been handed a hippo? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. What kind of, like, you know, swimming lessons were you brought to? Yeah, you're doing good, you're doing very good. Now, bring in the hippo! Bring in the hippo! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 is it something to do with education? <laughs> is it what do most kids think quarter an hour is? <laughs> I know the answer. It, it is something to do vaguely with education. Oh, it's, it? it's how long are new lessons going to be? How long are some new lessons going to be? Yeah, Mandarin specifically. Sure. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Very well, well done, Russell Harris. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. The question I was looking for is, how long might some lessons now last under proposed secondary school reforms? These are the radical proposals from the Qualifications and Curriculum Authority to combat pupil disaffection by revolutionising school timetables and teaching methods. Does anyone really care about pupil disaffection? Well, you know, is there any generation that didn't have... Hey, oh, like this. Do you know, uh, at school, school, at school you, I mean, working towards excellence does depend on the pupils, but we had a, you know, we had a bloke at my school who, when they marked A-levels, he used to get A, B, C, D, E, O, F. Those were the grades, right? The first time... He took his A-levels twice. The first time round... Why did round, you get an O before the F? Well, because it was an O-level pass and then a fail. So you've, but the first time round, he got two O's and an F. He retook them, he got two F's and an O. <laughs> and he was delighted because he could spell oo f off <laughs> with his A level results. But it's amazing. See, that's, that's the kind what, of kids you're working but with. But that's all you do at school. We, used to, we had a maths teacher called Mr. Winter and he had a comb over, right? And we used to play a game called Tilt the Wig. And the, the, aim, the aim was to get him so angry that his hair would flap down by one side. <laughs> and you cannot get told off by a grown man whose hair is flapping to. <laughs> It's the most fun. It's like when you go 10-pin bowling with your mates and they go and get a drink and you fiddle with their name. They come back, they bowl, they get a strike, they turn to celebrate and above them in flashing letters it just says, I touch kids. <laughs> it's that, <laughs> that level of giddy joy, you know? <laughs> totally oblivious to the fact of it. This is part of the new proposals, isn't it, that they have things like 10-minute classes to shake up education <laughs> and they have uh, the combined subjects and stuff like that. It is, genu it is genuinely a proposal that you would get different teachers yeah. to add it. And the one suggested by the man from the Qualifications and Curriculum Advisory Board, whatever it is, uh, was that perhaps the PE teacher could come around and tell you about great historical example of sporting figures and their leadership. Which is could there be a, a worse idea? Could, I mean, superstition. you're sitting there as a history teacher trying to tell people about life in the trenches in the First World War. A guy comes in and attracts it yeah. and starts going on about the life of Graham Souness. 
I think they combine religious education and biology, so then you'll know uh, where babies come from, but you'll also know it's a sin and dirty and bad. <laughs> The other suggestion was <laughs> <laughs> one of the <laughs> examples was anatomy, where you could have your science teacher and your PE teacher giving the lesson together. The danger then, isn't it, if you forget your Bunsen burner, you know, you may have to do the whole lesson in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> the whole scheme seems to be, what else can we get the PE teacher to do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're not also introducing new. They're trying to introduce new things like you can do archery and skateboarding apparently in school. <laughs> then what's yeah. going to happen there is you're just going to get a whole new type of drive-by shooting. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. That's <laughs> Mothers yeah, of is. gang members <laughs> pleading for quivers to be taken <laughs> off the streets. <laughs> it is. Uh, you'd be, but you should be able to hear the roll pat, roll <laughs> pat. <laughs> oh my God! Quick, yeah. duck, every. <laughs> 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 There was the example given actually of, the, of, the, of many of the new sports, and they, they suggested uh, skateboarding and golf. As if there's, yeah. you know, in a Venn diagram, just to bring maths into this, a Venn diagram <laughs> that includes kids who skateboard and kids who play golf. There was no intersection there at all. I was thinking you were saying it was skateboarding while golfing. No, no, like, no. no. That's, all, that's brilliant. That's like sort of council house polo. That's a fantastic <laughs> idea, isn't it? Well, all these new sports are because Blair, Blair thinks our kids are too fat. Uh, you know, that way they, they eat too much sugar and too much salt and too much fat and stuff. And, and I read a really frightening thing the other day, that if you leave a fat kid in a glass of coke overnight... <laughs> hmm, you can finish that one off yourself, to be honest. Well, the, the proposal for fat kids at school is that they give them dance lessons. They're not going to have the concentration for that, are they? Everybody do the mashed potato. Ooh, mashed potato! <laughs> The thing is, if they're saying, oh, well, how do, how do we get children to learn? Make them. Yes. Make them learn. <laughs> Combine algebra with a beating. <laughs> no. A lot of the new subject is just designed to make parents feel even more stupid, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's like, great. You yeah. know, can you help me with my Mandarin homework? Oh, yes, dear. It's like a small orange, a bit like a satsuna. <laughs> <laughs> People were saying, oh, wait, stupid. You know, what's the point of any of our kids learning Arabic? But it could be quite useful, couldn't it? For instance, if you were sat on the tube and two people in front of you were speaking Arabic, it would make you a little more relaxed about what they had in their bag. <laughs> <laughs> or, or not. It'd be good if it was Arabic phrases that you could really use when you're travelling in the Middle East. <laughs> That's a very sharp sword. Why are you videotaping this? <laughs> Where's the nearest marketplace? Good, I'll head in the opposite direction. <laughs> Basically, these education proposals, mm. you know, they've been upsetting teachers. And you don't want to upset a teacher, do you? Very easy to upset a teacher. All you've got to do to upset a teacher <laughs> is go, Ooh, you've got long holidays. <laughs> they don't like that, do they? <laughs> and then, if you continue with that with, Oh, and you finish at 3.30. <laughs> oh, they're livid, aren't they? <laughs> oh, I've got me marking. <laughs> And primary school teachers, they don't like it. If you go to a primary school teacher, and how old are they? You teach seven-year-olds. That's all right. You don't have to know anything. Do you? Well, you can tie your own shoelaces. They think you're a genius. <laughs> primary <laughs> teaching isn't a job. What, you're teaching little kids to do paintings out of seashells and glitter? That's what they'd have done if you weren't even in the room. <laughs> They've been teaching six-year-olds philosophy in Scotland, haven't they? Did you see this? Yes, yeah. there, is a, there is a borough in Scotland that have, has put Socratic uh, dialogue, all the philosophical, the major philosophical questions, on the curriculum for That's, primary school yeah. children. You don't want to be... When you're, so, when you're, like, six, you want to just be farting under your arm, you know, <laughs> blowing bubbles in milkshake, just going, ah. I heard that. Do you want that. to do a potato print? I might not even exist. <laughs> <laughs> The end of that round. The points go to Russell Joe <laughs> Now we come to our final quick fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way to the performance area, please. I'll call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. The first subject is unlikely things to hear on comic relief. And we'd just like to thank. The donation of 160,000 turkeys from a Mr. B. Matthews. <laughs> Remember, tonight isn't all about comedy. Here's Ben Elton. <laughs> of course, we're also supporting projects in the UK. For example, this. 
is my extension. <laughs> my name's Ade, I'm seven years old, and I have to walk five miles every day to get fresh water, so I really don't have time to play footballs with fat celebrities. Fuck off and give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> Right, here's one for you. Three Ethiopians walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> if we remove all these villagers' cataracts, one day they might be able to make our shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't believe it either. Some of those kids are fatter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, 20% of everything you give goes directly to a grinning warlord wearing a necklace of human finger bones. <laughs> this village had one goat until I ate it. <laughs> Later, Dawn French will be climbing into a bath of beans. Not for charity, it's her supper. <laughs> <laughs> We're from the Maasai tribe. When are we going to get that money for that eye dent we did? <laughs> <laughs> OK. The next topic is the worst thing your new neighbour could say. What day do the bins go out round here? My wife's body's starting to stink. <laughs> well, looks like we got ourselves a fresh one. <laughs> I hope my turkeys won't be keeping you awake. <laughs> <laughs> my wife and I are nudists and have been for the past 70 years. <laughs> You're bigger than you look through the telescope. <laughs> Welcome to the street, or as we like to call it, the cul-de-sac of Christ. <laughs> Do you like the music <laughs> of Sir What Death? What Death? I can see you when you sleep. <laughs> yes, that's right. The uh, wife breeds rock violets, the children are in a brass band, and I'm a paedophile. <laughs> It's simple. Your dog and I are in love. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, ladies and gentlemen. The winners of that round are Frankie Hugh and Rod. Sit down, everyone. That is the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Joe Colville, and Russell Howard. Commiserations to Frankie Boyle, Hugh Jazz, and Rod Gilbert. Thank you for watching. Good night. The next chance for mockery will be on Monday, the 19th of February, usual time, 10 o'clock here on BBC Two. And tomorrow, arch satirists Paul Merton and Ian Hislop in room 101, also at 10. There's more comedy for you right now on BBC Three with Man Stroke Woman.